Hi. In this session, we discuss about the group action on set. The action of a group on a set details how set transforms under the symmetry described by the group. One way of thinking of a group G acting on a set X is that the element of the group G may be applied to elements of X to give a new element of X. Many problems in algebra may be tackled via group action. Let us see the definition of group acting on set. So let X be any set and G be a group. So it is not necessary that X is related to G. The action of G on X is defined as or it is a map star from G cross X to X given by the ordered pair G comma X goes to star of G of X, G comma X. And it must satisfy the following properties. The first one is star of E X is equal to X for all X and X where E is the identity element of G and the second property is that uh, star of G H comma H is equal to star of G comma star H comma H for all G and H belongs to G and X in X. If G add to an H then X is called a G set. As we know that if the group operation is not specified clearly then we always take the group operation as multiplication. Similarly, in the group action, if the star is not defined, we take or we define star of g of x as g into x. That means by the left multiplication. Note that, I mean, it's not necessary that in the group action, we are not requiring x to be related to g in any way. But it is true that every group G adds on every set X by the trivial action. That means trivial action I mean star of G comma X is equal to X. This will be true for any X and any G. But the group action are more interesting if the set is somehow related to the group G. Let us see some examples of the group action. So let G is equal to GL2 of R. All of you are familiar with this group and it is the set of all invertible matrices, 2 by 2 invertible matrices over R. And X is equal to R2 which contains all the ordered pairs. We think of the elements of X as the column vector. X1, X2. Then we define star from G cross X to X as star of A comma X where A is, belong, A is a matrix and X is a vector which goes to A into X. And let us see whether this one X in the G adds on X. So to see that we have to check whether the, it satisfies two properties. The first one is you take one identity element of G that is your it is I2 and one element from X so you can see that then star of i2 x is equal to i2 into x which is same as x because i2 is the identity matrix. So the first property is satisfies. What about the second one? For that you need two elements from G. So here we are taking A and B or belongs to GL2 of R and x is in x. Then by definition of star, star of A, B, x is equal to A into B into X. Because you know that the multiplication is associative, associative in matrices, we can write that as A into BX or which we can write it as star A comma BX. Since BX is star of B comma X, I can write it as star of ABX is equal to star A comma star B comma X. So it satisfies the second property also. That means G adds on X. 
and here the star is defined by left multiplication with the element of g. Let us see the another example. Let h be a subgroup of g. So all of you are familiar with the set of left causes of h and g. So let us take L h is equal to the set of all left causes of h, h in g, that is our x. So we define star from g cross x to x by star of g comma xh is equal to ghh. We we'll check whether this one is a group action on x which is equal to lh. That means the set of all left causes of h and g. For that we need the identity element of g e and one element of x. Let us see it. Uh, let us take it as xh. Then star of e comma xh is equal to e into xh. Because e is the identity element, e x is equal to h. So we have e x h is equal to xh. So it satisfies the first property. What about the second one? For that we need two elements from g. Let g and g dash belongs to g and xh belongs to x. That is lh. Then by definition of star, star of g g dash xh is equal to g g dash into xh. By the associativity property of the elements of the group, we can write it as g into g dash xh. But that is same as star of g comma g dash xh. But g dash xh is same as star of g dash comma xh. So therefore, it satisfies the second property also. So thus, G adds on LH via the left multiplication. So let us see another example. Let G be a group and H is equal to G itself. So we define the map star from G cross G to G by star of G comma H is equal to G S G inverse. This also a group action. For this, to check whether this one is a group action, we need to check two properties. The first one is, we take identity element of the group G, E, and one element of X, your X is equal to G. So X is also belongs to G. Then, by definition, star of EX is equal to EX, E, e inverse, which is same as X. Let G1, G2, so it satisfies the first property, so let us see the second property. Let G1 and G2 in G and X is also in G because X is equal to G. Then star of G1, G2, X is equal to G1, G2, X, G1, G2 inverse. But we know that G1, G2 inverse is same as G2 inverse, G1 inverse. And using associativity, one can write G1 into G2H, G2 inverse, into G1 inverse. So it is look like G1H, G1 inverse, but by definition that one is same as star G1 comma X. So we can write here it as star G1, G2H, G2 inverse. But G2H, G2 inverse is same as star of G2H. So we can write star of G1, G2H is equal to star G1 comma star G2 of X. So this action, we call it as uh, the acting on G acts on itself via conjugation. This is important to us in the future part, in the later part. So now one, we can see that the, this group action induces always a group homomorphism. So suppose, uh, I mean, we state it as a lemma. Let G be a group and H be a set. And we want to show that a G adds on X if and only if there is a homomorphism phi from G to SX, where SX denote the group of all permutations of the elements of X. Now, SX denote the group of all permutation of elements of X means what? It's a map. Elements of X are maps, in fact, it is the permutations. Permutations means what? They are all bijective maps from X to X. So that means that 
What will be the element of G in G? Phi of G is a permutation on X. That means phi of G is a map from X to X, which takes some element of X to some other element of X or X. We'll see the definition of, uh, see the pro proof of this lemma. So one way, suppose G adds on X. So here the action star is, we by default we define it as the left multiplication. So using this action, we define a map phi from G to SX by phi of G of X is equal to GX. Note that G belongs to G, then phi of G is an element of SX and it must be a permutation and it takes X to GX. So we show that this, in fact, for any G in G, phi of G is, is it belongs to SX? That means, is it a permutation on X? Or is it a bijective map on X? To check whether that one is a bijective map, we need to show that it is on to and one one. First of all, we will check phi of G is on to. So since phi of G is a map from X to X, we take some X belongs to the codomain X. We want to find a pre-image of X in the domain X. So since G adds on X and G inverse is belongs to X, G inverse belongs to G and G adds on X, we get G inverse X belongs to X. Therefore, by definition of phi of G, phi of G of G inverse X is equal to G into G inverse X which is equal to G, G inverse into X by the property of the group action and which is M as e X, which is equal to X. So therefore, G inverse X is a pre-image of X. So therefore, phi of G is on to. Now, to check whether this one is 1, 1, <coughs> suppose uh, phi of G of X is equal to phi of G of Y for some X and Y belongs to X then by definition, GX is equal to GY. So applying G inverse on both sides, we get G inverse GX is equal to G inverse GY. Now applying the second property of group action, we have, which is same as GG inverse X is equal to GG inverse Y. But GG inverse same, same as identity, so we have EX is equal to EY, and which implies X is equal to Y by the first property of the group action. Mm -hmm. So therefore, phi of g of x is equal to phi of g of y implies x is equal to y. Therefore, phi of g is 1, 1. Now, we have to check whether this phi is a group homomorphism. That means we have to show that a phi of g1, g2 is equal to phi of g1, composite phi of g2 for any g1, g2 in g. So let us take two elements, G1 and G2 belongs to G and X belongs to X. Then, by definition of phi, phi of G1, G2 of X is equal to G1, G2 into X. But by the second property of the group action, we have G1, which is same as G1 of G2 X, which is equal to phi of G1 of G2 X, which is same as phi of g1 or phi of g2x because g2x is same as by definition phi of g2x which is same as phi of g1 comma phi of g2x this is true for any x belongs to x therefore phi of g1 g2 is equal to phi of g1 comma phi of g2 hence phi is an homomorphism so now we prove the converse of this lemma conversely suppose we have a map phi from G to SX and which is a group homomorphism. We want to get a group action of G or X. So for that we define a map star from G cross X to X by star of G comma X is equal to phi of G of X. Because phi is a homomorphism, phi of E is an identity element of SX. That means it is a trivial permutation. That means it is a phi of E of anything is equal to that thing itself. Therefore, for any X belongs to X, phi of E of X is equal to X. 
That means star of e comma h is equal to h. So the set therefore the star satisfies the first property. Also, as phi is a group homomorphism, by definition, star of g one g two h is equal to phi of g one g two of h, which is equal to phi of g one comma z phi of g two because phi is a group homomorphism. Phi of g one g two is equal to phi of g one comma z phi of g two of h. Which is equal to phi of g1 of phi of g2 of x. That is same as star of g1 of comma phi of g2 x, which is equal to star g1 comma star g2 x. Therefore, g adds on x. So this is all for the day. Thank you.